Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California. And today I'm gonna to share with you how I made, oh my gosh, this adorable bird bath. I just put it outside. I was just gonna do a video of it and I can't believe it, look at this. This is unreal. Anyways, all you need is an ice cream container, a solar fountain pump. I put a little spoon on there for a decor. I love my chocolate syrup to add to my ice cream. And that's it. This is unreal. I'm trying to talk quiet because I just set it out there and look at this. Look at this. I mean, I literally just put it outside and it was going to do the intro. So here I'm going to show you how I put it together. Anybody can do it. Just sacrifice yourself, eat some ice cream and watch this and see how you can put this together and put it in your yard, your garden, your deck. This is on my deck. Oh my gosh. Today, I'm going to show you how I made the cutest water fountain using a solar fountain kit. And all I needed was the pump and the solar panel, an ice cream container, a chocolate syrup container empty, and a hose. And I found a stick and you can decorate it any way you want. I made this bird bath, bird water fountain. They can come take a drink. They can come take a bath. And this is so portable once you put it together. The problem is I've been pretty much on lockdown and I haven't been going anywhere with everything going on. So now I've got to look around the house and see what things I've got that I can make a bird fountain out of. And you know what? This has been one of the greatest, most fun things. This has been fantastic. And I've got so many other things I'm putting together. But I hope you enjoy this. This, this will be fun for you and the kids to make if you're eating ice cream or just you know what just do it for the birds get yourself a gallon of ice cream get yourself a bottle of syrup force yourself to eat this and then save the containers and watch how you can make a fun fountain so this is how easy it is to make a fun ice cream bird bath so what I did here was I needed a one gallon ice cream container and my Hershey syrup container. This is just for fun. And I got a dowel, it's just a simple little thin wooden dowel. You can use any type of stick you want. And what I did here was I cut it. I ended up cutting it to 16 inches. You'll see as we go along why I needed it a certain length, but 16 inches worked for me and I plugged in my soldering iron because now we have to start making holes. That Dell is going to go into the Hershey's container and it's going to hold it up to give it the illusion of the Hershey's syrup being poured onto the ice cream container. So I had to figure out exactly how far the Dell was gonna go in and I needed to make a hole so it will balance on it. It's basically for balancing. I had to wait till the hole got cool because that plastic gets really hot and that's it so now I've got it see it goes through and it hits the bottom of the container and it balances really really well so I figured this was perfect this was the right length and now I had to take it all apart because what I'm going to end up doing is I need to make more holes so I took the top the spout off the chocolate container and I need to make that hole where the chocolate comes out bigger because I'm going to insert the tubing that will be connected to the solar fountain. It's going to pump the water through. There will be no water inside the Hershey's container. That's simply a prop. Water is going to be flowing from the ice cream container through the tubing out. There will be no water. I'm not filling the Hershey container with water. So I, I had to make the hole bigger because the hole is obviously very small for the chocolate syrup. And be very careful because that plastic does get hot when you're working with a soldering iron because you can burn yourself. No, I didn't, but you can. So be careful with it. So just work the opening with your soldering iron. I love my soldering irons. I do all kinds of plastic work with it. And I was working in a very well ventilated room, by the way. It's best to do it outside, but this room is all windows. So it was really, really good. So once you've got the hole big enough and your tube slides through, then you've got to figure out where you're going to make the hole on the Hershey's container or any container that you decide to use if you decide to make something like this. 
So this is where I decided the hole would be because it's got to go from the inside of the ice cream container back into the Hershey's container. So the hole's got to be big enough. And if it's not big enough, you know, just uh, go ahead and do it again. It looked like it needed a little bit bigger. I, it can be loose, remember, because there's never going to be any water in it. So it doesn't matter if it's, you know, loose. So I made the hole bigger until it cools or you'll burn your tubing. And that's it. It slid right in. Now I pushed it all the way through. See, there will never be any water inside this Hershey container. It's well washed, by the way. You want to wash your containers very, very good. Now I slid it through the top because you saw the top nozzle. I already made the hole big enough and just screwed it on. That's how easy it is. Now the tube is going through that container. And now I have to decide about, you know, where the stick's going to go in and how I want to make a hole for everything. Because there will be a hole in your ice cream container because you have to pump the water out through the Hershey container down on the lid. So just here I'm just analyzing it all looks good. So far so good. And make sure you know which way is the front and the back. So before you make any more holes, decide which way looks better to you when you're sitting it somewhere. I want this whole unit to be one unit they can lift and move. So I decided that which was the front and which was the back and where my tube was gonna go. And here I've gotta make the hole large enough towards the top. You can't make any holes on the bottom because that's a reservoir. Your ice cream container is a reservoir for water. But towards the top where you're going to guide through the tubing, you want to make sure that hole is large enough to hold the tubing. If it doesn't slide through, you'll have to make it a little bit bigger. And so the hole is big enough. Now I have to make holes in the lid. Now with this particular unit, you want to make sure you have enough holes. So in this particular case, more holes is better than less. Because if you don't make enough holes and it's real sunny and your solar pump is working really hard and fast, you'll end up overflowing and your water will not be able to drain back into the unit quick enough. So don't worry if you make too many holes because birds will bathe on just the amount of water on the top. The little bit of splash, they just need a little water. They'll drink, they'll bathe. So make a lot of holes. If you feel later you didn't make enough holes, you can go back and make more later. There's many ways of setting this unit up once you've got it all set up. You'll see, you can use it just the way it is. You can put a bowl on top. Uh, I made an, you'll see, I made an ice cream scoop for it. There's so many fun things you can do. But do make sure that it drains well. And you can't leave the lid off because the birds won't use it. They want to be able to have some place to land and feel secure that they're not falling into the water. Remember, they don't swim. They want to take a bath and they want to drink. You just want to make sure that the water will flow all back into your gallon container. Now I put it all back. I figured I had enough holes. Remember, I can always go back and add more holes later. And I saw how I want to set it up. And it looks good to me. I think that's the way I want it. I'm going to have the hole in the back. And it's going to just hang like that. I'm pulling out enough tubing on the Hershey's bottle because I want the tubing to come out. I don't want any tubing where water is going to get inside. Plus, I have another idea on how I want to do this. Keep in mind, I did this raw. I literally sat down with this and one step at a time decided how I wanted to do it. I had never made one before. This is my first and one and only one so far. I see how I have a lot of tubing out through the, the spout. It's good to have a little extra in case you need to cut it later. If it's too short, you'd have to get a whole new tubing. Now, the tubing will end up going back inside the bucket, and that's where you're going to put your solar pump. The pump will be inside, and the unit will be all one unit. The only thing you'll ever have to pick up and move is just the unit and the solar panel. And remember, a little extra tubing is good because you can always trim it when you're completely done with it and have it set up. You don't want too much of a splash, or the hummingbirds may not come. They don't like a lot of splash. Other birds don't care. The higher the tubing is, the more of a splash when it's hitting the lid of any container or any unit. 
Now here I decided to do something very unique. I was thinking about it, so I was ready to do it. I decided to mix some colors together and make a brown color that looks like Hershey's syrup. I'm going to paint the tubing here that is coming out brown. So when the water comes out, you're not going to see that clear tubing. What you're going to see is brown tubing just on the end. I'm not doing the whole thing, but just on the end. So to give it an illusion for, for me for fun that it's chocolate syrup coming out. So I mixed the paint until I got the right color that I felt it was just a red and yellow. I didn't have any brown. So I used red, yellow, a little bit of black, a little bit of white, and just mixed it until I had a chocolatey looking brown. This is all non-toxic paint. It says that on the bottle too, but it is a non-toxic paint. Most paints here in the state of California are all lead free and they're non-toxic. That's what I've been told by all paint departments. I just slowly mixed it until I felt it was the right color. And I also blended it a little bit just so it's a kind of a dark and light brown. And I pulled a little extra out. And then I just painted it. This is totally up to you if you want to go this far with it. And remember, you can use any container you've got. It's just that these days I'm in the house a lot and I'm not running to the thrift store. So I'm starting to look around and, and uh, use things I've got in the house. Or I've actually been shopping online for foods that have cute containers that I can make something out of. I'm desperate. I like making things and I have not been going to the store since the lockdown. So this has worked out really, really good. It's keeping me busy when I have some downtime and I like making things. Only painting the outside of the tubing. The inside is still clean tubing. This is very clean tubing. This is the tubing they use for making beer and for dairy use. I got this tubing online. I'll put the link below where I got the tubing. I got this on eBay and it's fairly cheap. Uh, you can go to a tropical fish store and some hardware stores do sell the latex or rubber tubing that will fit your solar fountains. You just have to make sure it will fit your unit. And I have ways, I think I've showed you in my other videos, how to make the tubing a little bit bigger or even a little bit smaller. And here I just left it to dry. So once the brown paint was dry on the tube that I painted, it was time to put it together. Now I found that the handle that was already on the square one gallon plastic ice cream container actually held it. Now I know it wouldn't hold it if a wind came or something, but it held it enough so I could use that as part of my structure on this water fountain. So I decided to use zip ties on this. The zip tie would be attached to the stick that is holding up the plastic chocolate Hershey's container and it would be zip tied to the handle of the ice cream container. This would make it one big unit to carry. You know, one unit, I could just lift it and carry it, not in pieces. Now, before I get it all put together exactly the way I want, and I decided to try to figure out what I wanted to add. And I looked at a couple plastic spoons I had. I ended up going with the pink one because it gave really nice color to it. Figured I would add it to the stick. Now I was ready to get the solar fountain kit out. This is a brand new kit and I took it out of the box to see how I was going to set it up before I put everything together permanent. So here what I'm looking for is the part that is going to attach to the tube. The pumps are slightly different. Not all solar fountain kits are exactly the same. Some have a nozzle already attached to the pump. Some have a hole where you attach the attachment nozzle to it. It's, it's the part where everything attaches to it. So I was just looking to see how this one was set up. So after analyzing it, I figured I needed some masking tape, maybe, maybe some duct tape. So I went and got that. I got my hot glue gun out because I see that I'm going to be using a hot glue gun for this project for a few little things, nothing big. Now remember, you measure twice, you cut once. Measure three times if you have to, because if you cut the tubing too short, you'll have to get more tubing. Here I decided 
w that would hold the dowel that's holding up my Hershey's container where the water's going to flow through. I went ahead with just plain old duct tape. Du duct tape sticks really, really good to plastic containers. And I figured I'm going to use duct tape. Yes, I could have built a, built a stand and it could have gotten very elaborate, but I wanted it simple and I wanted to just get it done. So I decided to go with plain old duct tape, which would help hold the dowel in place in the position that I want. Remember, it's zip tied, but it's also going to have duct tape to hold it. You can do it any way you want. I went with good old duct tape. Now it's time that I've got to see how I'm going to set this up. Remember, the pump has to be on the inside of the gallon container. It's got a wire, and of course, the solar fountain panel will be all on the outside, but the pump's got to be inside. And so I've got to now attach the tubing to the pump. Now there's different ways of attaching the tubing. Sometimes it can go straight onto the pump, and sometimes you're going to attach it to the parts that come with it. This tubing was a little bit small and too snug, so I used a hot glue gun and I rolled the tubing over the nozzle of the hot glue gun, which stretches the tubing and makes it bigger for me. It's really easy to use. It's a good trick to use on a lot of different crafts when you're using tubing for solar fountains and other projects. But the hot glue gun will soften the tubing and slightly melt it, just slightly, and just roll it until you can get it big enough to slide over the plastic nozzle part that attaches to your solar fountain if it's too small. And this way you can slide it over. See how it slides on now that it's hot? It's gonna really seal really good too. And that's it. Now I've got that on and now that part will attach to the pump. Now the pump is attached to the tubing and there it is. And see, the pump's going to sit inside a little self-contained unit. It's wonderful. The water stays fairly clean and everything. You're not going to get leaves and different things in there. No feathers, no leaves. Don't have to wash it that often. But the pump will sit on the bottom, and it doesn't have to sit straight up and down. The main thing is the pump has to be submerged underwater. It doesn't matter if it's sitting sideways. Now, the lid's got to go on. So I have to decide where I want the wire to come out. And what I'm going to do is notch where the lid is going so the lid can still snap on snug, but the wire will drop down a little bit. So I'm going to use my soldering iron to make a slit on the side, just a, a little bit, so the wire will be underneath the lid. Just take a little notch out so I can still snap on the ice cream container lid. Remember, you cannot make holes on the side to attach anything because that has to stay full of water. Now you I take my soldering iron, and it's very simple. I'm just going to cut out a notch of the plastic on the top so the cord will be underneath the lid. It's not going to hurt anything as far as holding water because you're only going down a half inch to an inch of that. And I'm not filling it to the very top with water anyways. Make sure you wait till it's cool because you don't want to put the cord there while it's hot or you'll end up melting your solar fountain cord, the electrical cords. You don't want to melt that. Now, once it's cool, you'll see how nicely that will just slip into that notch that you took out. See how the lid will fit on and the cord will slip down. Now here, I also did make two holes on the top to help hold the dowel because again, the water's not gonna be on the very top. So I do have the opportunity here to tie the dowel to the unit on the top. So I used a zip tie on the top. Remember, the water's gonna be underneath those top holes. And I can put a zip tie. So I have extra support now. I've got a zip tie on the handle holding my dowel. I've got duct tape holding the dowel. And now I have a zip tie on the top under the lid because you wanna make sure that lid can snap on tight like it's supposed to, when it holds ice cream, you want it to snap on. I put the zip tie now under the lid, and now I've got three ways of holding the dowel in place. That's why it's easy to pick up and move anywhere you want. It's all one unit. And that's all there is to it. It's pretty much ready to go. You can cut off the tails on the zip tie, clean it up a little bit, and you are good to go. 
I actually made two holes on the container on the top too to hold the tubing in place so it won't go anywhere. Now once I set it up, the water is just going to go pouring on the top, which gives it, because this top has a little lip around it you can see on the ice cream container, the, it will have a shallow amount of water on the top Hummingbirds love shallow water. They can splash on the top. A lot of birds can come drink out of the nozzle. Uh, they could do, use it any way they want. Uh, what I ended up doing, and I'm gonna I'll put the link on, is I made a little ice cream to go with it. That's separate. You may not be interested, but I'll put the link on how I did that. But you could put a bowl on top. You could put nothing on top. You could do anything you want. The birds will use it just the way it is, just like that. Now we just have to take it outside fill it up and put it anywhere you want put it in the garden put it on deck move it move it to where you're going to be and where you're going to enjoy it if a windstorm comes pick it up bring it in it's that easy to bring in you don't have to leave it out when the weather's really bad so now i think it's about time to get this thing in the garden outside with the birds and see what they do and it was amazing. I couldn't believe when I first put it out and the hummingbirds came to it. I couldn't believe it. The Orioles came right away to drink out of it before I even put the ice cream on it. it the birds flocked to it. This is so fun, so easy to clean. You just unsnap the top, everything is mounted in there, tip it over sideways, rinse it out, and put it back together and fill it. So easy, so fun. It was such a shock to see the hummingbird. I went to grab the camera to do a video of it as I sat it outside and I turned my back and turned around and the hummingbird was already taking a bath. I mean, can you imagine? I had a whole back from screaming. I would have scared him. So I hope I gave you some ideas on how to make a fun fountain with found objects in your house. Who knows? Look around, look in your kitchen cabinet, look in your refrigerator. You might be surprised on what you can find. With this, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Eat some ice cream. Sacrifice yourself. The hummingbirds and the birds in your garden and yard are worth it. Bye-bye, everybody.